Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at diagonal brace connections, and specifically we're going to be talking about the uniform force method. So let's get into what the uniform force method um, is all about. So really it's, it's a methodology to determine forces at the beam gusset and column gusset interfaces for diagonal bracing connections. So we have a diagonal brace that comes into a gusset uh, with an axial load on that brace, and we need to determine what the forces are against the column and against the beam so that we can design those connections. Um, and ideally, if we're doing this from start, right, from scratch, and we're creating the, the connection, uh, we try to select geometry that does not produce moments on the connection interfaces. Um, and we'll talk about that in, in alpha and alpha bar and all that sort of stuff um, and, and what that means. But ideally, we try to get it the geometry such that the location of the reactions um, is, is at the, the connection uh, centroids, so there's no moments at the column or beam interface. And then we calculate the horizontal and vertical components at each of those interfaces. So you can see there against the column, we've got H sub C and V sub C. And then against the beam, we've got H sub B and V sub B. And what we're trying to do is satisfy this equilibrium equation, uh, which is alpha minus beta tan theta and E sub B tan theta minus E sub C. Um, and there's a lot that goes into the derivation of this method and how that uh, all works. Um, there's a really great video uh, by AISC um, in the continuing education series. Um, we'll go ahead and post uh, a link to that in the description below. If you want to dive into uh, how this force was you know, developed, um, there's a, really, uh, a lot of good content in that video for how that is all developed. So let's talk about what we're going to check during uh, this design, right? So we're going to first check, obviously, the brace to gusset weld, right? So it's a, it's a weld there for this type of connection, or you could have a bolted connection, that sort of thing. Uh, we're going to check the gusset plate for tension, and then we're also going to check the gusset plate for buckling. Then we're going to check, right, we talked about getting the forces against the beam, so we'll check the gusset to beam weld, and then also the gusset to column weld. And there's some important assumptions to make here. And um, you know this is a pretty high level overview. Um, and again, the, the AISC video has, goes into great detail on this. Um, but like we talked about, right, we ideally try to, to pick that geometry um, so that we don't have moments on the beam or column. We're going to get into alpha, alpha bar, beta, and beta bar. Um, but really what it is is alpha and beta are the gusset connection centroids, so where uh, you would have a moment equal to zero at each of the interfaces. And then alpha bar and beta bar are the actual gusset connection centroids. Um, so it is possible, right, if you design, um, you know, you set out the geometry correctly, your alpha bar will equal your alpha and your beta bar will equal your beta. But if you are, you know, checking an existing connection or something like that, it's possible that your alpha does not equal your alpha bar um, or your beta does not equal your beta bar. And that's how you get a, uh, a moment at one of the connection interfaces. So let's talk about our problem statement today. Uh, we are going to be designing the connection shown there uh, with a brace force of plus or minus 75 kips. Um, the brace angle from the horizontal is 43.6 degrees, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to convert that to meet um, the, uh, the coordinate system that, that the uniform mes force method is based on. We've got a W16 by 57 beam, uh, which is a depth of 16.4, and then we'll need our E sub B, which is half of that of 8.2. Our column is a W12 by 65, which is a depth of 12.1, and then again, our E sub C is uh, that divided by 2, so 6.05 inches. And so uh, as part of the uniform force method, we want to sort of set either beta or alpha um, equal to beta bar. So we want to just basically pick a location where we want that geometry to be equal. Um, and then we can run our equilibrium equation. So for this, we are going to assume that the uh, connection up against the column is going to be uh, beta equals beta bar. And you typically want to do this on the weaker of the two connections so that your stiffer connection will be able to resist any moments uh, that are uh, uh, put onto it by the, the difference of this, in this case, alpha and alpha bar. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so let's go ahead and click into our AISC 16th edition. We'll click on our steel connection design modules, and then we'll go ahead and click on our welded gusset plate. Let that load up. 
And so now we're going to go through on the left side here and start to enter in some of our geometry parameters. So the first option we have to select is whether or not we want CalcBook to uh, look at the load on the brace in both the tension and compression directions, so both positive and negative, or we could just have it um, evaluate one. So we could do positive for tension or negative for compression. So for us, the problem statement said uh, plus or minus 75 kips, so we're going to go ahead and uh, leave this checked for both directions. And then before we talked about um, setting one of the interfaces, either the gusset to beam or gusset to column, to take the moment in case that our uh, alpha and alpha bar or beta and beta bar don't line up. Um, so for this uh, situation, we are going to select our beam to take the moment. Um, we talked about this because it has a little bit longer uh, weld length there, and so it'll be a bit of a stiffer connection. So if there is a moment, uh, we'll take it in the beam. So let's go ahead and start updating some of the parameters here. CalcBook gives us a default um, kind of setup here for, for the, the gusset connection, um, but we're going to go ahead and modify this. So our brace, brace width is going to be 6 inches because we have an HSS 6 by 6 by 3 eighths. Um, our brace to gusset weld length actually was not defined, but we'll leave it at 8 inches. Uh, you can see right now it's telling us that the geometry uh, does not give us a, a correct output right now. So we'll keep going, and this, this warning will go away uh, once we enter in the rest of the parameters. So uh, we're going to leave the weld leg size at quarter inch. Um, our angle between the brace and the column, right, we had a, a slope of 43.6 degrees from horizontal, which we'll just do 90 minus that, and that gives us 46.4. So we'll update this to 46.4. We're going to leave our uh, block shear uh, uh, UBS value uh, equal to 1, right? This is just going to be uh, a uniform uh, tension stress. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave our gusset thickness at a half inch. Um, our edge distance are, is going to be one inch. That's pretty typical. And we want to update our beam to gusset weld length, which we had uh, defined in the uh, PowerPoint there at 20 inches. So we'll go ahead and update this to 20 inches. And you can see that error went away now that we've set the correct geometry. Um, our half depth of the beam we said was 8.2 inches. And our half depth of the column we said was 6.05 inches. Uh, we're going to leave, I think, the rest of it as is, our weld uh, filler strength at 70 KSI, and then our uh, safety factors we'll leave uh, at the LRFD values. And the last thing we need to do is enter in our demand. Um, this is going to be an ultimate load, so we'll click no load combinations, and we'll go ahead and enter in 75 kips. And remember, because we selected to check tension and compression, right, it will check both positive and negative uh, values for checking the gusset plate design. So let's step through uh, some of our calculations here. So uh, the first one is going to be the demand on the beam weld, right? So we're going to start going through this uniform force method procedure, right? We decided that our beta bar, right, on the column is just going to be the length uh, divided by 2. And so we've determined this length based on the geometry that we have. So we actually didn't define this 16.88. This was just based on the geometry that we had, based on the brace angle, and based on our 20 inches of the beam to gusset weld length. So we just calculated that to be 16.88. We divide that by 2, we get about 8.5 inches. And then we decide, right, assume any internal moments are taken by the beam to gusset connection. So we're going to set our beta equal to beta bar. Our alpha bar, right, which is to the, the geometric center of that beam weld, um, is going to be just the length of the weld over 2. So that's 10 inches. But then in order to satisfy the equilibrium, equilibrium equation, right, we're going to solve for alpha. And that's going to get us 11.42 inches. So we can see here that our alpha and alpha bar are not the same. Right, so you can see here in this image, right, our alpha bar and our alpha are not the same. So we're actually going to get a moment here uh, on this beam weld. Uh, then we just uh, solve for our R distance, um, which is to the working point. We get 24.13 inches. And then from there, we can actually calculate the components, the weld forces uh, on the, the beam to, uh, or the gusset to beam connection here. So we have our V sub B, which is the vertical force on the beam web, at 25.5 kips. Our horizontal force is 35.5 kips. And our uh, moment on the beam, right, because we decided that our alpha and alpha bar are, uh, um, are not the same, right, it's just going to be our force times that difference, right, so that delta um, gets us 36.25 kip inch of moment uh, at, at that uh, uh, gusset to beam interface. 
And then we're going to convert all of our welds to a, a, a for, force per linear inch um, so we can calculate our weld capacity based on a per inch basis. Um, so we calculate it for uh, uh, the force parallel, our force perpendicular, and then the, the forces due to the moment. Um, and then we add that up, right, doing square root sum of the squares, and we get a total weld demand of 1.27 kips per inch. And that is going to be for uh, a weld on either side of the gusset plate. You can see here we divided by 2 times the 20 inches of weld length. And then we're going to do a similar procedure for the column weld, right? So we use the same values we, we determined before for beta. Um, and we calculate the V sub C, our H sub C, and then again converting those to uh, a weld demand on a per inch basis. And then we get our uh, total uh, uh, demand of 0.96 kips per inch of weld on the column. Okay, now we go to the capacity side of things, right? So we're going to check our brace to gusset connection, and that's going to be our weld, right? This is pretty straightforward. We just take our, our length of our weld times our um, you know uh, uh, fillet weld the size and that's how we get our capacity there and because we are checking compression as well oh, excuse me tension first uh, we are going to check the block shear right so we are going to check um, the gross shear and, and then the uh, the gross tension here and check our block shear in tension and then we're going to do the same thing for buckling right and compression because we selected to do both uh, positive and negative. So we're going to determine what our Whitmore width is based on the, the, the um, dimensions and geometry that we have. Figure out what our gross area is, right? We're going to figure out what our three distances are from each point of the Whitmore width, so the center and then each ends. And then we can calculate uh, what the effective buckling length is based on that uh, average. Calculate our radius of gyration of the gusset plate, our effective slenderness ratio, and then the uh, buckling capacity of the plate. Next, we move to the column to gusset connection, right? So this is just going to be the weld capacity based on our quarter inch weld size. And we can do that again on a per inch basis. And then the same thing for our beam to gusset connection. And we can also do that on a per inch basis. Right, so we're actually controlled here by our brace weld. Um, we have plenty of capacity though, and we have a demand to capacity ratio of just 0.42. So lots of leftover capacity in this design. So that was a, a diagonal brace connection utilizing the uniform force method in CalcBook. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you've made it this far, uh, we'd like to uh, offer you guys a 25% discount on your first month subscription. Uh, you guys can use the code uh, YTCB2024 and uh, go ahead and redeem that 25% off your first month. So we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.